are going to uh, explore a very exciting model where, where we are going to simulate an uh, order processing line with multiple picking stations along a conveyor. So what's fascinating about this model is that the replication technique, so replication technique is very handy when we are uh, simulating different picking stations with similar operations. We are going to use the replication technique in this model. And the best part of this model is that users can easily increase or decrease the number of picking stations with the help of a parameter. So without further delay, we are going to learn more about it as we dive deeper, in, deeper into the model. So let's get started. So first thing, we are going to create a new model. Once we have created the model, we are going to create the agents that will be necessary to build this model. So we are going to create a new agent type. We are going to name it box. We are going to build it from the scratch. Okay, finish. So now that we have created our box, let we are going to use the source element to generate that box. So this will be on the main agent. So this is our source and the new agent will be of the type box. So now that we have created the source element, we are going to draw a conveyor. So this will be our infeeding conveyor. Okay. So now when the product is sourced, it should flow out, flow through the conveyor. So we are going to use the convey element block and we are going to define the convey from conveyor to the infeeding conveyor. So from here, the conveyor will flow through here and we want a network port at the end of this conveyor and we are going to name it infeeding port. So once you have got the infeeding port, okay. so now in this source element, we will see that our new agent is box, uh, but we want to define the new agent via a function. So for that, we are going to take the uh, function element here and we are going to name it get box and it will return a value of type box the agent that we just created it will use an argument called index it will be of the type integer and it will return a function it will generate a parameter called zone number and it will vary between zero and whatever we define for n zones so we're going to define the uh, parameter n zones. So zones are representing the picking zones in our model. Uh, the zone, there are the five zones. Okay. So now it will allocate this zone number and it will return the new box with the zone number and it will assign a color. So we are going to define another function called box colors so the box color will not be a function it will be a collection of colors so 
into the collection of colors and we are going to name it box colors it will be the collection will be array list and the element class will be of color okay so we are going to define the colors here so it will be so very okay here are some colors you have defined so based on this we are going to get the colors So now in the agent box, we are going to define two parameters. One will be uh, zone, it will be of the type integer and another will be color. This will be of the type color. Okay. So now that we have defined the new agent uh, we have defined the function for generating the new uh, we are going to create another function for defining the uh, for generating the box so here instead of uh, specific defining it by default system we are going to write here the this function that will be get box okay so for generating the agent this function will run and it will generate a new box assign the parameters and we are going to generate 20 boxes per minute okay so now that we have generated the box we are going to connect this conveyor with the picking zones so for that we have to create the picking zone population for that i am going to go to the parameter and I'm going to use the pickup element here. And I'm going to create a flowchart block. It will be called picking zones. The So let's keep it here and it will be a population of agent. The given number of agent will be the number of zones we, de we define. So it will be n zones. Okay. So now that we have defined the number of picking zones, we are going to go inside the picking zone agent by double clicking on it. Okay, so now that we have gotten our picking zone icon here, we are going to connect it with a port. I don't want to show the name. So this is our picking zone. So we are going to have the inputting conveyor here also. So from the metal handling library, let's draw the inputting conveyor from here to here. And we are going to have a picking conveyor so it will be between here and here and we are going to connect these two sides so once we have done that I am going to introduce a transfer table so we are going to delete this conveyor for and we are going to introduce the transfer table okay so now we are going to connect both of these converts i'm going to name this input port and the output port will be here so the infeeding port will be connected to the infeeding port which is in the main agent right here so once we have done that we are going to 
use a palette rack here and we want to rotate that palette rack We are going to resize it with the 20 cells. Uh, number of levels will be 5 and level height, let's keep it 14. Okay, so we are going to draw the network. Okay, so now it's good. Now we are going to allocate a location for our loader or picker. So we are going to name it picker. Let's make the radius 5 and we are going to use a resource pool to name them loader. We are going to name it loader. It will be moving type. Capacity will be directly defined as 1. The home location will be picker and I want to have a custom agent type for this. It will be a worker here and let's click on finish once you have done that okay so now we have got our loader here we are going to in-house the items in this rack it will be defined by call of inject function and from here they will be stored in the rack. We are going to store it using the rack store element. We are going to define the pallet rack from here. They are going to wait for some time. After waiting, we are going to pick it up and we are going to do some servicing on them. Service, 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 services here. So after servicing, we want the product or item to be loaded into the box. We are going to use an enter element here, and from here. We are going to connect it with our picking zones. Okay, so now that we have defined our picking zones, uh, we have defined the rack store element. So the servicing will be done by our worker, loader. Also the rack picking will also be done by our loader. So the pallet rack will be this one and destination will be the picker home location. And we are going to use some resources to move that. It will be the loader. So from there. It will come here and it will go back to the main agent. So let's go back to the main agent here. The target conveyor will be this conveyor with of the exact picking zone. So we have five picking zone. So we are going to define a function. Function is in the agent element. We are going to define the function. And we are going to name it get in feeding port. It will return a value and of the type other. It will return a value of the type network port. It will use an index uh, which will be of the type integer. The function will be. So based on the index number, we are going to return the ports. So this is our in feeding conveyor port so and if the index number is not zero in that case it's going to return the population of 
like with the specified index so we have got like five picking zones here based on the index it will go inside that agent and it will select the exact exact output port okay so now since we have done that so the target conveyor will be target conveyor will be picking zones dot get agent dot picking number so this was our box agent type will be box and here inside this box every agent has a picking zone number between 1 and 5 that we have defined here okay so it will be between 0 and 4 so like in Java the counting starts from 0 so once they have gone there they are going to select the picking conveyor so our picking conveyor was here so this is our picking conveyor okay so now that we have got our picking conveyor it will go to the to this location to the so in our picking zone uh, we want to define here a position where there will be a scanner uh, will be here position on conveyor so it will be scanner and the material item type will be box it will be true for all the converts okay so at the scanner we are going to block it So whenever the product is here, we want to free one element from this weight block. So it will be a random agent from the palette rack. So our palette rack is this one. So it will free a random element from here. And free it and the product will be serviced here and the pickup will uh, pick it up. So our enter block will be of the agent type box now that we have done it in the main agent we want to dynamically exit this box using an exit element so whenever a pro the box comes here we want to send this box that is uh, to this picking zone and we want it to come here okay and it will enter here well, after there uh, the picking zone will pick it up and it will convey the product to the end of the line end of the conveyor line so we are going to use another convey element So the convey from position will be current position and the target conveyor will be that is uh, the last agent of this picking zones okay so it will like it will take up the last picking zone and it will target the takeaway conveyor so in our picking zones this was our takeaway conveyor
pressure of the and this will be the end of the process. Okay, so we have completed 80% of the work. Now we are going to check if there are any errors in the model or not. So I can see there are five errors so far. Let's fix those errors. So here it can it says that get box cannot be resolved to our type. So it's a function. We cannot type new here. So let's check. Okay, one gone. So picking zone number cannot be resolved. So it is like saying agent dot picking zone number. So in our box, okay, it's called zone. It's just zone. It's not picking zone number. So we're going to replace the picking zone number with just zone. Same here. Zone. Let's see if it. Okay. So now it says that in fitting port cannot be resolved to a type or a variable so we were telling it to pair with port that is the infeeding port uh, so we are going to define a parameter this will be infeeding port of type other this will be network port let's see if this solves the issue okay so the method get box integer in the is not applicable for the arguments okay let's see get box uh, so we have to include an index number here so in the function gate box i think we defined an argument so this is not needed so we're going to delete the argument this was in the gate in feeding port yeah so now let's check it okay okay so all of our errors have been solved so now we are going to try to run the model. And see what happens. So there's an error. It says that it cannot find the path. So this is happening because we have, we have not defined the location of the box to appear. So we have to define the location of the source of arrival, location of arrival. Okay, so we have to define a parameter of this picking zone. So through the get infeeding port, we are going to generate the path here. Okay, so now we are going to run it again. okay so now you can see that the box is moving so it says that an agent was not able to leave the port because there is no uh, space here so in that case we want to destroy the agents that cannot enter so we are going to stop the force pushing and we're going to destroy those agents and we are going to run it again okay looks good okay so from here they are coming here we can see that It says that uh, root picking zones dot weight is null because there is no product in the weight block. 
so we are going to introduce some products here so the this we we defined it by call of inject function so at startup we are going to inject the source block with 100 items okay so for some animation improvement purpose we are going to resize this icon okay so uh, since this icon is like you see it's a very large so it, it gets very difficult to scale the model that's why we are going to drag this output to a position where the icon will fit closely to this rectangle okay uh, so you see if i drag it here the icon becomes quite reasonable so once our icon is resized we can scale our animation here very easily so we just have to find uh, the picking zone presentation which will you will find in under the main agent in the project tree and it will be in the presentation and inside the level you will find the picking zone presentation so here you can see it's the picking zone presentation is here uh, so I'm just going to reallocate it to okay let's just click it better it's here somewhere okay so we're just going to drag it and place it here for better presentation and here in at the x-axis we are going to type 180 into index also we have to resize the model uh, for every 100 pixel the ruler ruler length should correspond to correspond to five meters okay and the conveyor width has to be 0.5 meters so you have to resize it i have already done it so once we have done that also we have to resize the converse here here every 100 pixel should correspond to two meters okay. and the conveyor width will be 0.5 meters as usual so by default it was set to have one meter you just change it to 0.5 meter for all the conveyors here so once you have done that you might have to scale the uh, <coughs> scale the presentation again but first we will need to check what's the current condition okay so now you can see the five picking zones have already is already visible so for better animation i'm just going to drag this uh, icon presentation a little bit higher or maybe we can just drop this one a little bit lower let's check now <coughs> I think we have to do it a little more let's keep it here okay uh, I think you have to go a little higher uh, this should be better okay now you can see the converse are aligned and there is a space between each conveyor we don't want that we want the converse to be located side by side uh, in order to do that uh, we have to select the presentation again here was the presentation you see that i was drawing the agent with offset to this position okay so that means uh, every the first agent should appear here after there will be a gap uh, another agent will be drawn here there will be a gap another one okay so we are just going to reduce this 180 by maybe like 90 and check how is the animation okay so i think they have overlapped a little here you can see so we have to increase it a little bit higher maybe 100 
a little bit more 120 think 125 will be perfect okay now it's now it looks much better so here, here is a, a small gap between the converters so we are going to move this one a little bit to the right and run again a little bit more okay that's better so now we can see that the boxes are in housing from the in feeding conveyor they are move, moving to the target conveyors and based on that they are going to go to the picking zones and from here the worker should load the product so let's check what's happening the error we saw is that only objects of type QE can be connected so in the picking zone at the pickup block we left it to be true but we don't want that we want the box to wait until it is filled with one quantity of product okay so once we have done that we are going to run the model again Okay, so there is no network between the uh, rack and the target. So we are going to make a connection using a path node, a point node, and we are going to make it a little smaller. And we are going to connect the two nodes that is, this node and the worker location. okay so once we have done that we should solve the issue So I want my uh, products to arrive at this position that is called node. So we are going to specify the location as node and my products will arrive here from there. They are going to be, they are going to come here. Uh, it was I want to increase the speed a little now run the model again okay so here are my products now still uh, error is coming it says that the network must be defined for pallet rack so somehow the network is not defined for the pallet rack so just in case i'm going to delete this line and i'm going to create a new network i think there is a slight glitch when we created the this node with this node so that's why now still we are seeing okay it's connected 
says it's connected at this path. Oh, let's see. Um, no, something is wrong. Maybe with this rack. Okay. Oh, let's see. It has turned blue. That means the network is defined. Yeah, now it is good. So just uh, drag your rack and place it back. This should solve the issue. So we're going to run the model again. Okay, so now you can see the products are stored in the rack. And okay, 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 okay. Right. Okay. Okay, good. So we have completed like 95% of the work. Now we are going to define a, a presentation for this product. This is showing default uh, product animation. So at the palette rack, we want to like we were sourcing the items here. So just in case, we are going to create a new agent type and call it item and we are going to assign uh, maybe a bottle okay okay now let's run it okay now you can see the Racks are but the bottles are here, and also uh, when the conveyors are stopping, uh, they're stopping at a very bad position. I want to stop those here. Position and size, okay, exactly. Okay, looks good. So now let's try. To assign different colors for the boxes for each uh, picking area okay so you can see all of them are the same color we want to assign a color to the uh, boxes here right okay let's so let's assign a color to the box so in at the beginning of this video we created a function called get box and we were defining the box colors for get zone number so in this parameter the color is already set there so now we are going to try to set the color of this uh, box based on this color okay So here is our box. You can see the name of the box is box one closed, and there are two types of material 27 and 28. So 27 is the color of the full box, and 28 is the color of the tape that's closing the box. So when the um, agent starts up, we want to uh, type in the name of the box that is this one. So we're just going to copy the name and make sure this name is similar to that and we're going to set the color as per the color of this so now when we are going to run it we should be getting the color of the box okay so 
for some reason it didn't work okay let's see why is that so we set the color of this to this one put it and we were defining the boxes per color uh, get box from here box colors dot get zone number box colors is where here so based on the zone color we should have gotten it so in order to check that we are going to create a population of boxes and see if the parameter is updating or not so we want to check for an existing type of agent that is a box and we don't want to anything just click finish and when that is done we just want to run the model okay uh, we want the boxes to be initially empty and add the boxes to that population so let's run it okay so one box have been generated let's see the parameters here so it says dark orange so this should have set the color of this box to that color so let's see why it didn't work so box one closed that set color it was default color so okay for some reason this doesn't seem to work so i think i saw something uh, this is a bug in the any logic system uh, that do not l let us change the color of the 3d object and they said they will fix it in future but still I want to change it to some basic color and see if it works now it should at least uh, Gray, so gray is not listed. Let's see. Okay. Mm, yeah. It's not working for some reason. So this should have been green. Uh, let's say color MA material 27 uh, maybe let's try with a different box maybe that will work boxes let's try this one uh, and we are going to name it box one closed and we are going to delete this one and only one material is name is here that is ma box so we are going to adjust the name here we're going to delete this and it will be just ma box so once we have done that let's see still no effect no uh, let's try to change the color to gray by default to silver okay 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 uh, so it's not working for some reason uh, maybe in future versions of any logic they will fix this issue so here goes your conveyor system which we have created dynamically okay
so feel free to add up this model and expand it as per your need so happy modeling and have a great day thank you